What's good, y'all? Welcome to my review for Batman The Long Halloween Part 2. Ladies and gentlemen, I finally watched it. Actually, it's basically I'll know it's late as fuck right now, so if I sound a little tired, that's why. But, um, yeah, man. Overall, I thought, uh, this, first of all, I, I must say I did love the movie, but I gotta say, I definitely do think Part 1 was better, although I think Part 2 was fantastic in its own right. Although, I, like I said before, I would say I overall enjoy Part 1, uh, way more than I did part two for Batman the Long Halloween. So without further ado, guys, let's just jump in. So the movie is directed by Chris Palmer and stars Nyana Rivera, Josh du du uh, du du uh, Duham 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 I don't know I think they say Jensen Ak Akels, Troy Baker, and the plot of Batman the Long Halloween Part 2. Batman pursues a serial killer with the assistance of police on officer Jim Gordon, attorney Dick Hepica. But when the killer takes the criminal, takes on the criminal family of Falcons, Harvey then gets caught between the fronts. Now, obviously, now with this one, this was obviously going with like the second half of the Long Halloween storyline because we we're exploring the parts. And I think over, well, first of all, I'd say the cast once again is great. The voice acting from Jen, uh, Jen, uh, Jensen Akels uh, once again was fantastic. It's Batman, the rest of the cast was great as well. Um, especially the guy who voices uh, Harvey Dent, I thought he was really, really good in the film. Especially when we started to get to when Two Face starts to get more introduced and we start hearing his voice in Harvey's head before he actually fully transforms into Two Face. Those were probably some of the favorite scenes in the movie because I thought those were really cool. Um, Harvey's actual like design, as we see him like when he does when he does become Two Face, when he has like the bandages all around him, and then when he, like it's fully you know full fledged Two Face, half and half burnt face and shit. Both of those forms look really fucking cool, man. I really thought both of them looked awesome. And one other thing I thought was also really cool, first up, also, the cinematography of this film was actually, was fantastic, low-key, like, way better than I was expecting, like, low-key, there's a lot of banger shots in here, surprisingly. But, um, one thing I thought that was really cool was actually, there's just, like, this one scene that we actually see Falcone, um, Falcone and like Bruce back when like Bruce was like a kid and like Falcone was like in like his 20s or whatever actually kind of like talk to each other and interact which give which I thought that was really cool to watch just given the, just given these two characters history I thought that scene was really really cool and really well done and I really enjoyed that um um so that so that was also really cool um the ending i also thought i also thought was good but the actual reveal i'm not obviously that kind of spoilers but the reveal of Callum of who uh of who the holiday of Hol holiday killer was i thought was also done really well um i can't really like i said i can't really compare it to how it was the comics because like i said i like to realize my review for the first part i remember fuck off from the comic but one thing i speak of the first part one thing i, I think i completely forgot to mention in my review for the first part that I want to talk about here is actually Calendar Man. Calendar Man in this film was first of all, it was finally cool to find Calendar Man in one of these movies, besides like Fox Team, and the guy that points to me did a great job. But it was like, I really dug to see the Calendar Man both in part one and part two. They were always really, really good, they were always very tall. I always liked seeing Calendar Man. I thought that was pretty cool. Those scenes were really cool. But um, now, as far as like flaws, I would say, have them. I think one of, one of them kind of comes down to the story, and I just overall think that the story of part two just isn't as strong as part one, just because of part one, that movie was like fully focused on the holiday killer, who is he, what's going on, why are all these, why are all these monsters getting murdered, you know, that whole mystery was what was the selling point of part one, and it really made the story really nice invested and really made you invest in the story but with part two like obviously they continue on with the storyline but it just doesn't like it's not as much as i would say in the forefront as with part one because you got other batman villains coming in there like scarecrow mad hatter club points not you to be fair to like really nothing and you also have like the uh Harvey's to fit to sense the two uh, into two face really that the holiday killer almost becomes like I, I would say he's not like completely like an afterthought but he isn't as much as a focus of the movie's plot as much it was in part one and I think it did overall hurt the movie and over my overall enjoyment in comparison to the first part but um 
Yeah, man, and also, uh, one other thing I was also kind of kind of was just the way the movie opens. First off, the movie opens actually the exact same way the first part did with like that um, title sequence where they actually show up in the credits with panels from the comic, which once again, I loved. I was actually surprised they went with that for the second part, but uh, it still looks really, really cool here as well. But they kind of started off with like, it's like, like three months later after like the first part, and he's like, boom, he's like being captured by Poison Ivy. And I would have liked to maybe have these movies been able to like blend in and like mesh together a little bit better where maybe we showed off when Bruce got kidnapped and kind of what he was doing during the three months before they jumped right into where they were rather than you know just jumping right there without giving you much context and um, what happened uh, right beforehand so yeah now that was kind of more of a nitpick me I just kind of, I wish I wish always did we were able to blend into to where it was a blend together a little better than they have doing but you know overall but yeah man Overall, this was still a fantastic film, and I would definitely highly recommend you guys to see the movie out if you guys have not seen part two already. And yeah, that's so overall my final verdict for Batman The Long Halloween Part 2, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be a 9 out of 10, guys. I was thinking about giving it an 8, but just because of how great the cinematography was, the voice acting, and the ending, I really dug the actual the reveal of, of who the holiday killer was. That kind of bumped it up to a 9 out of 10 for me. Otherwise, I probably would have given this movie like an 8.5 out of 10. But yeah, guys, leave your thoughts down below in the comments what you guys thought of Batman The Long Halloween. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Which part did you thought was good? Did you think the first part was better? Did you think the second part was better? Leave it all down below in the comments, guys. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like, if you did, subscribe, if you're new. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. If you like it, leave the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.